Hello people, this is Jeff here and we're going to be talking about the Google AdWords 2011 keyword tool. You're going to find this tool by going to Google and searching for a keyword tool. Look for the number one link and it'll take you to this tool. Uh, I also recommend that you're signed in with AdWords. Uh, right now I'm using this tool while simultaneously being signed into, signed into AdWords. So I, I log into AdWords first, then I go to this tool. And you can also go to this tool by just going to your AdWords campaign here, home campaigns, opportunities, reporting tools, and uh, accessing it that way. The reason I like to use it is that when I do a search, I can get up to a thousand results, or sorry, up to 800 results, whereas if I didn't have an average account, the number of results I would get back would only be a maximum of 100. So I highly recommend when you're using this tool to, to do it with a Google AdWords account. Not critical, but I recommend it. It'll make your life easier. So like all keyword tools, um, all you do is simply type in the phrase that you, you want to do some research on. And now in this case, we're going to be searching golf balls. And the first tool that we're looking at, we're going to be going through three tools within this tool, is the keyword tool, the traffic estimator, and the placement tool. So for now, let's search golf balls. And you see there's an option here for website. I could just search if I had a particular page, I wanted to get the keywords off a particular page and then get Google to show me what's the demand of those keywords from that page. I would then supply a website URL uh, into this field here, click search, and then Google will pull off the keywords and give you an estimate for traffic. Kind of interesting, I guess, if you want to see what your competitors are potentially targeting. Um, I don't really find it that useful myself, but that's what it's about. Let's click search, and this is going to make a bit more sense once once we see this data come in. So what we've done here is we've searched golf balls. As we can see here, we've got 800 results. Uh, 800 is the maximum. Now, one thing that Google is doing here is also including all relevant phrases, and I'll show you. Uh, Google's not just searching golf balls. Google is going to bring back any phrases that contain golf balls, but Google's also going to bring back any phrases that it thinks are relevant to golf balls. This is because we haven't enforced only show ideas closely related to my search terms. If we were to tick that off, only golf ball phrases would be included. And I'll show you here. We're just going to sort by monthly demand. So now we've sorted by global monthly demand, and we can see golf equipment is not golf balls. So if I was selling golf balls, I might not really want this data in here. Uh, it might be useful for a kind of a discovery process if you're trying to see what's related to golf balls or what Google thinks is related to golf balls, like golf equipment. That's sort of interesting. Uh, Google thinks that golf equipment or balls are related to equipment. That might be useful for SEO or for articles, that kind of stuff. But really, you know, just for basic keyword research, we probably don't really need golf equipment data in there. So one thing I like to do is enforce only show ideas close related to my keyword terms. You know, if I was doing research, on dogs, it might be an idea to have it off, you know, and I could, you know, it would bring back, you know, puppy results, dog results, uh, breed results, you know, maybe I was doing dog training, it would bring back everything I thought that was related to it. But for a particular topic like golf balls, there's probably not really a lot of ways to say golf balls other than golf ball reviews, used golf balls, personalized golf balls, secondhand golf balls, but almost everything in here is going to contain golf balls. Um, I don't think people even use the singular version of it. You know, I don't think people want to buy a single golf ball. Um, my guess is they're always using plural. I mean, you know, I could definitely search both versions, uh, singular and plural, if I wanted to. But I usually like to do the only show ideas closely related to my search terms. Now, right now, uh, under the advanced options, I'm only searching Canada or whatever region you're from. I'm going to tick this off. And what that's going to do is now it's going to change it to the world. And so... If I was selling to the world, I would change it to that location. If I was only selling in Canada, then I would for sure change that option. Or if I was selling in a place like Germany or United Kingdom, and you can see here we got a pretty good list. So if you want to see what particular countries are searching, you could do that. And you'd want to do that if your service was regional based or only limited to a single country. Or you, I suppose you could even do research one country at a time. Every country will use different words, different languages. Uh, you know, England and Canada spell a lot of words differently. Same with the States. We spell a lot of words that have the same meaning differently. Um, but typically for most research, I just go all languages and all countries. Now, the next option is include specific content. Uh, I could include adult ideas. I don't want to include adult ideas because I'm doing golf, so there's no, uh, that has no business being in, in this data. If I was doing adult type of content, uh, then perhaps you know I would use that. Um, next is show ideas and statistics for uh, desktops and laptop devices. This is basically all kind of personal computers. Then we've got all mobile devices. 
So if you want to see what mobile phones are doing, how they're finding keywords or how they're searching keywords, which is going to be very different than desktop stuff, I would venture to guess that a lot of uh, cell phone searches are more regional based, people looking for services. I doubt people are going onto Amazon.com with cell phones or as much anyways. Uh, you know, they probably wait till they get home and they can read all the details about a product. So there's probably a lot more regional searching. So for sure, you would get a lot of different data between the two devices, PCs versus cell phones or mobile devices. And then within mobile devices, we could do WAP devices or mobile devices with full internet browsers. So, you know, iPhones would be an example with phones with full internet browsers. Some Nokias have that. Um, a lot of the Google Androids have full browsers. So again, you can break that data down. Google's offering you all these different options. Now, next thing we can do is we can also filter keywords. So in golf balls here, we've got phrases only related to my search terms. If we wanted to, we could say, you know, I only want phrases that have, you know, 2,000. And this is really going to limit this. I'm going to break it down to phrases with a search greater than 2,000. And, oh, I don't know. Um, let's change it to average cost per click or estimated cost per click, say, less than one dollar you know you might want to use this for a little bit of niche hunting where you're like i want a certain amount of demand but i also want a certain amount of price and so estimated cost per click of course is the price that you're going to pay in adwords for a single click when someone clicks on an ad they're going to charge you that price so we can see in this data here uh the first phrase is golf ball review 35 cents you're going to pay for that golf balls title list uh, zero, that is probably wrong. Top rated golf balls, 51 cents. Second hand golf balls, 90 cents for second hand golf balls just to buy a single click. So if you were thinking about getting into that business, you might want to think again. 90 cents is a very, very dear price. Uh, if you had a 1% conversion rate, it would cost you $90 to make a single sale. You would need 100 clicks at a 1% conversion rate. 100 times 90 cents is $90 very expensive to make a sale so this is stuff that you want to be looking at now this is probably also too to assume that you get, you know this is the top bid price and I'll show you some other stuff um, a little more advanced functions that we can use to to go through this now uh, right now we can see our data is sorted by global monthly searches uh, if we wanted to we could organize this data by relevancy so Google would say what's the most relevant thing to golf balls and then put it in, in order to sending from that. We can sort by the keywords, by the competition, global monthly searches, uh, estimated average cost per click, very important uh, figure I like to hear about. Uh, ad share, don't care about. Search share, I don't care about. Strat from web page, I don't care about. Uh, here you can customize these columns and this is where you can move things up and down. If you want to put like search trends over here or down here, you can move it around, change any columns you want. Uh, use all the columns if you like. You know, Certainly we could turn them all on. I don't really find it all that necessary to do that. And again, I don't really like these numbers here. I don't care about that. What I care about is the global monthly searches and the estimated cost per click and perhaps the local trends. This is giving us seasonal data. So it's telling us, you know, here in the summer, this is January, this is December. So January and December are quite slow. And then here's the busy months here. So we've got April, May, June, and July. And so that makes a lot of sense, right? Um, competition. Uh -huh. It's not really an ultra useful figure. This just means how many people are advertising for this keyword. So, um, like, let's find one. Let's sort this by competition. I'll give you a good example for this to make sense. So, this one's very competitive. Under the realm of golf balls, golf balls for cheap has the most advertisers. You can see this is almost like just about full. And if you go all the way down to say, like, here, this has about half as many competitors. All this means is. Um, it's not how many competitors are in it, it's just how competitive it is. So this is the most competitive phrase in this realm, and this is relatively, this phrase here is roughly half as competitive, medium competition. So, eh, is it useful? Not really. These estimated cost per clicks, a little bit deceiving. Quite often it says eight cents here. You probably won't actually find this for eight cents. Um, there'll be people bidding on broad match phrases like golf balls, and they'll be willing to pay a dollar. So maybe nobody's bidding on customizable golf balls. Um, so you got to be a little bit careful here. If I was to search estimated average cost per click, I'm just going to look at the most expensive phrases right now. Wilson golf balls, 99 cents. Lady golf balls, 96 cents. Oh, and this is also too because I'm enforcing these rules. So I need to turn that off. Goodness. Uh, let's get a real look at see what people are really willing to pay for golf balls. I forgot I had all those filters on. 
uh, $7.54 for custom imprinted golf balls. Now, the reason that someone's willing to pay probably so much money for that is that custom imprinted golf balls, someone probably prints a lot of them at a time, uh, probably corporate deals, and there's probably not nearly as much competition. For example, if you're just selling the regular old Callaway ball, there's probably a 100 places you can get that online. But custom imprinted golf balls, probably not being sold everywhere. So that phrase probably converts higher, and that's why people are willing to pay $7.54 for a single click. Custom printed golf balls, also very expensive. Golf ball logos, also very expensive. And we can see here, these are all roughly the same thing. Customized, printed, engraved. This is a great cluster, a great set of phrases. You know, if, if you were in this business, you'd want to try and have ads for all the different ways that people are saying this. So this information is ultra, ultra important because it helps you shape the content that you put on your website. You need to know where's your global searches. You know, what is the demand for these? We can see that golf ball logos is searched 9,000 times versus custom and printed golf balls, 1,300. Now, these numbers are maybe a little bit off the way we're looking at it now. Right now, the Google Keyword Tool defaults to the match type of broad. The problem with broad match is that this means that custom and printed golf balls is searched 1,300 times, and this also includes any phrase that Google thinks is related to it. So I really want to know what do people search for, a more practical estimate, and we're going to see this number probably go down quite a bit here. Uh, right now we're at 1300. So now we go down to 210 with a phrase match, and this means that people search 210 times a month, custom, space, imprinted, space, golf, space, balls. We can have a word in front or a word behind but it has to contain within it custom and printed golf balls. If I change this to exact, we're going to see this go down yet one more time. And this is going to say how many times do people search monthly for custom and printed golf balls, that exact word. And so we can see those numbers went from 2,600 down to 210. And it stayed in this case. I would have expected golf uh, exact match to bring this down, but I guess there's probably not many words to put before or behind this. But sometimes you will see exact search get a lot less demand than phrase match. Myself, I like to use phrase match. I think it's the most accurate way of looking at the data for the most part. So those are your match types, and uh, this is very important. Again, I like to make sure that all these things are ticked off here. Now, when I'm done with this data, you know, I'm doing my searches, I would tick this off and I want to download this data. So I would tick this off here. So now I've ticked off all that data and then I could download it by clicking here and I would go all 569 or the phrases I only wanted to select. Now Google presents me with an option. What format do you want it in? I, I work in Excel, so I'm going to use CSV for Excel. If you're familiar with these other formats, by all means go for it, but CSV for Excel is the safest. Click download and then basically that'll allow you to save that to your computer and then you can open that up in Excel. Now, some other options that I can use in this tool, and I'm getting pretty long in the tooth here. We're running quite late into this. Is um, Let's go through some of these little uh, tools here. I could include terms like uh, used, for example. If I wanted to enforce that, I click used and click plus. And then what that'll do is in my results, it'll just make sure that all the phrases contain used. Likewise, I could also use excluded terms if I wanted to. I would simply type in the excluded terms that I wanted. So if I had no uh, interest in used, maybe I'd take used out of here and put it down into the excluded terms because I don't want data in there. Myself, I don't really use these two, two options here, or these two, two options. Um, I do all my data cleansing in Excel, so I don't really use that. Um, next option that we see here is categories. So if you want to find out, you know, if we search golf and we want to see what Google has under apparel for golf, we could open this up and we could see, you know, golf, how Google thinks uh, phrases are related to golf clothing or golf footwear. So for example, I could type in just golf, and I'll click search. So now this is what we see for uh, apparel. So pine metal golf, I'm not sure what that is. Um, so I could you know, look at the clothing if I wanted to and see what are people looking for within clothing as a category. Um, looks like the data's off a little bit this time. Well, no, actually there's quite a bit of stuff. There we go, clothing for men. Um, oh, and that's because we're sorted by estimated average cost per click. Let's sort by relevance, that's always gonna help. And we can see that there's probably going to be lots of good data in here, and this is going to be organized by golf clothing. And then I could go into golf footwear. Um, oh, this is not sorted by relevance, is it? Oh, no, it is. Yeah, clothing, trousers, so forth. So 
Now, again, because I only search for golf, I'm only searching within this category. So Google's trying to give me a rough idea of what it thinks is popular. Golf trousers, I didn't know people would use that word, trousers. I thought they would have used pants. But it'd be interesting to take pants and trousers and compare them to each other, again, if I was selling that. And so forth. We can go through all of these categories here, and this will help us find particular phrases. Categories, kind of useful, I suppose. Um, not, a bad, not a bad option to use. 